In this video, we are going to be breaking down what the playoff scenarios are and why last night's loss for the Mets wasn't as devastating as you think. Right now, the Mets and the um, Diamondbacks are in a vintage choke off. The D backs playoff odds fell to 38.9%. The Mets still have a 65% chance to make the playoffs. Braves are at 96.1% odds to make the playoffs as of right now. And again, the Mets and D-backs are in a vintage choke-off. Mets have lost their last three, but the D-backs in that time have lost three out of four. Um, and while the Braves are, are surging, obviously, it's too hard to tell what happens in the other games. That being said, you know, it's a very tough road. In order for the Mets to clinch today, they need a win and the D-backs to lose. Um, in order for the um, Braves to clinch, they need a win or a loss by the Braves. And obviously the Mets and, and Braves win and the D-backs lose. They're eliminated, and it's the only scenario where the games don't matter. Although, they still might play them for seeding purposes. And at this point, I hope that they do play them, because the Mets clearly um, just cannot beat the Brewers. I think they have a better chance going up against the Pods. So if all three teams win, the Braves will clinch, Mets will need a split with a doubleheader, and if they lose both games, the backs are in. Um, the math behind that is simple. If the uh, D-backs win, they're 89 and 73, Mets would be 88 and 72, and the Braves would be 89 and 71. So, Braves aren't following well the D backs. And the match has the timing of the D backs, but need to have at least one win to get to 89 and 73. Lose both and you're at 88 and 74, and you're not making the playoffs at 88 wins, I don't think. Um, if the Braves win, Mets lose, and the D backs win, this is the worst case scenario for the Mets. And why do I feel like this is the case that's going to happen? In that case, you might need to sweep the, the doubleheader, and the D-backs would need the Mets to lose one. Why? Well, Mets are at 87-73, and 73, and the D-backs would be 89-73. and 73. So the Mets would need to get to 89-73. If they're at 88-74, 87-75, they ain't making it in. Obviously, the Braves at 89 and 73 are perfectly fine since they own the tiebreaker against the Diamondbacks. And and, and that'll be a scenario where all three tie teams are tied at 89 and 73. And that'll be where the Braves and Mets get in. If the Braves win, the Mets and D backs lose. The Braves clinch, the Mets only need to win one. D backs need the Mets to lose both. That might actually not be the worst case scenario because. In that case, the Braves might be resting some of their starters if they already have cleansed the playoff spot. And they might... And we know the Brewers didn't roll over and die for the Mets, but the Padres and Royals put up punt lineups out there because they had already cleansed. Now, for the Royals, I actually disagree with this, personally, because you want to have the five seed. You'd rather play Baltimore, the team that had the number one seed last year and still choked in the ALDS to the Texas Rangers than the Houston Astros, a.k.a. the team that made the ALCS the last seven years and has done no worse than a Game 7 in the ALCS, you know, over the past five years. Like, in the playoffs, I'm not betting against the Astros. And after they start off the year with a 12-24 and record and yet still have clinched the AL West title after a historic collapse by the Seattle Mariners and a historic resurgence of their own right by the Texas Rangers. You know, I, I really think that the, um, that the, um, what's it called? The, uh, that, you know, the Royals would be better off playing the Orioles. Nonetheless, I still put up a punt line about that. And, even, and the Padres, even with that punt lineup, still beat the Diamondbacks 5 nothing, even though half the guys were backups. And some of the backups even scored. Um, 
So, uh, you know, the Brewers didn't roll over and die for the Mets. Because they want to ensure that the doubleheader is being played. I don't know what they're going to do today. Because they pretty much ensure that a doubleheader will be played. Unless something freaky happens. Um, I mean, obviously the Braves and Mets win. And the D-backs lose. The Braves and Mets clinch. And the Braves lose. Mets win. And the D-backs lose. The Braves and Mets both clinch. If all three teams lose, the Braves clinch. The Mets need one DH win. And the D-backs need the Mets to get swept. We'll go over all, all the math behind that stuff at the bottom later. Now, if the Braves lose and the Mets and the D-backs win, the Braves need one DH win, the Mets need one DH, DH win, and the D-backs need either team to sweep. This is an interesting scenario. But if the, if the Braves lose, they're at 88-74. The Mets... Wait, no, they're not 80, They're 88-72. The Mets... Are also at 88 and 72. And the D backs are at. Um, are at 89 and 73. So, if the Mets and Braves split, then they're both at 89 and 73, and that'll be the scenario once the D backs are kicked out. But if one team sweeps, one is at 90 and 74, one is at 88 and 72, and the D backs at 89 and 73. Slip in as a six seed. That's the math behind that. Um, and as for the Braves and Mets losing the D backs win, the Braves only need one win in a doubleheader. The Mets need a doubleheader sweep in the D backs sweep? I'm, I'm confused. This this scenario is confusing, um, so I'll, I'll work that one. I'll work the math out behind that one after I'm done with this, so I can properly focus. If the Braves and Mets win and the D backs lose, D backs are 88 and 74. The Mets would be at 88 and 72, and the Braves are at 89 and 71. So in that case, even though the Mets are 80 and 72, they can do no worse than 88 and 74. And that's what the D backs record is going to be held to. And in that case, um, the Mets own a headset tiebreaker 4 to 3 against the Diamondbacks. Braves also own a tiebreaker against the Diamondbacks. So the Braves lose, Mets win, and the D backs lose. They both clinch because, again, the Braves, they're at 88 and 72 in that scenario. Mets are at um, 80. 8 and 72 also, and the D-backs 88 and 74, they can't get in. Now, of course, seeding remains to be determined. Now, if all three teams lose, the Braves will clinch a spot because they will be at 88 and 72. Mets will be at 87 and 71. Still need one um, win in the doubleheader. And then the D-backs will need the Mets to get swept. Because it, at that point, 87 and 75, the Mets are obviously not making it at 87 and 75. But at 88 and 74, the D-backs lose and also 88 and 74, the Mets own the head-to-head tiebreaker. And for the Braves, you know, you know, the worst it could be is 88 and 74. Obviously, you know, 89 and 73 or 90 and 74 are still in play for them. But, you know, you're starting to see how it's starting to come together. You know, these are... These are very complicated scenarios. The bar to get into the playoffs, it looks like you're going to need at least 88, obviously. You're going to need at least 88 wins. And the Mets are the only team to have not gotten to 88 wins thus far. Um, but I really think you need 89 wins to get in this year, at least. Possibly 90. You know, we all thought at the end of June that, that, that we could see a National League team make the playoffs at only about 80 wins. In June, that's what I, I genuinely thought, that a losing record team could make the playoffs in the National League. And and even at the All-Star break, you know, the Mets had a spot at 49 and 46. So I really thought that, um, you know, a team that w would only need about 84 or 85 wins to make it into the playoffs. But after the late June, res late July resurgence of what all these teams began to all skyrocket at the same time simultaneously, 
one thing became evidently clear to me is that the, is that you probably would need at least 90 wins to make it to the playoffs. And we're seeing that in action, too. We're seeing that you that it's probably going to be 89 wins at the cutoff. We could even see an 89 team be excluded from the playoffs. Now, as for this scenario, I'm going to have to work this out. Um, I'm going to have to work this out. So, let's open up a Google document of the scenario. So in this case, Mets lose, Braves lose, DX win. Because I think that's a scenario. So Braves would be 88 and 72. Mets would be 87 and 71. Diamondbacks would be 89 and 73. Wait, the Mets will be 87 and 73. Okay, that's my bad. And every time I said the Mets 87 and 71, I meant to say 87 and 73 if they lose. They'll be 87 and 73 if they lose today. And if they somehow win, they'd be 88 and 72. Whereas if the Braves lose, they'll be 88 and 72. And if they win, they'll be 89 and 71. Okay. So, so DH, a brave sweep will be, I mean, the Braves will be at 90 and 72, Diamondbacks are at 89 and 73, and the Mets are at um, 87 and 75, so obviously they're out. If there's a split... The Braves are 89-73. Oh, shit. The Diamondbacks are also 89-73 in this scenario, leaving the Mets out at 88-74. This would require a Mets sweep. Even in, that, even in that case, though, the Mets sweep. The Mets are at 89-73. Wait. But then the Diamondbacks will be at 89-73. And then the Braves in this scenario are... Out at 88 and 74. Oh, that's what they're saying that the Braves would, is that the Braves would need one. The the Braves would need one win in a doubleheader. The Mets would need to sweep, and it says D-back sweep. I think it, I think it meant D-backs clinch. Actually, not. So, that's the scenario in which the D-backs clinch, and then, and then the, you know, obviously, all the uh, other, other stuff has to happen. Keep in mind, the Braves do own a head-to-head -head advantage, 6-5 to five against the Mets, so a split will give them the head-to-head -head advantage. The Mets need a sweep to get the head-to-head -head tiebreaker over the Braves. The Mets control the head-to-head -head tiebreaker over the Diamondbacks. Now, looking at the odds on ESPN, but Diamondbacks versus Padres for September... 29th, 2024. ESPN is currently estimating a 57.2% um, chance that the um, D-backs win. Because even though the pitcher that they're putting out there isn't great, the Padres pitcher... Wait, no. Their, their pitcher has a worse ERA than the Padres pitcher. But uh, you still have this aspect of the Padres... Uh, trying to rest out their starters. They're probably putting up another, another punt lineup, although the D-backs' bats are silent right now. Then again, they're also trying hard not to get swept. Um, you know, they're trying hard not to get swept. Now, as for Royals versus Braves... Um, We see the Braves have a 63% chance of winning. First of all, the pitching makes it obvious Charlie Morton is like the worst pitcher on the Braves. And they're using him. 
Because they're try because they decide not to use Chris Sale. They're saving him for the series. Oh my god, this means it's gonna be Chris Sale and Spencer Schwallenbach. Well at least the Mets have won a Chris Sale start. They cannot beat Spencer Schwallenbach. I swear to God. They can't even hit against him. Now we don't know if the Royals how many stars they're going to rest because I don't know if they're going to be trying for that um number five seed. Which right now they do not control. They do not control. Um, they definitely get to the number five seed. Um, you know, Charlie Morton is the worst pitcher on the Braves, so I feel like there's a chance that he could just throw some meatballs right at their way, and allow. You know, and, and allow a ton of runs, but like, but like the Braves are being strategic. They they are they are making the, they're going to make the Mets sit through a Chris Sale start. Even though it might not matter, because of course they would. Because everything has to go against the Mets, and the Mets have to survive every single bullet fired sh at them. In this game, the Braves are even, are even stronger favorite four. Now, as for the Brewers versus the Mets, um, well, the Brewers are 53% odds to win. They are using a not so great pitcher. But look at the wins, the WHIP, even though Peterson is the worst e has, a better, has a much better ERA, the WHP for Peterson is worse, and he can get lit up by this um, fatal um, offense by the um, Brewers, because they're probably not vesting anyone. And the Mets, they can't score. They can't hit. They can't do anything productive offensively. Um... You know, like, 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 I would still say that the Mets might have a chance, but you also have to understand that the Mets do poorly on Sundays. Although they won last Sunday, and sometimes when they're trying to avoid a sweep, they do better on Sundays. Um, you know, we, we, you know, one thing I want to show you with the with the Mets is that before they started to suck on Sundays after the All Star break, like, the Mets used to be really good on Sundays when they were trying to avoid a sweep. Obviously, they couldn't on March 31st against the Brewers. But, like, an example I want to bring up is April 28th against the St. Louis Cardinals. I was at this game. To avoid a sweep, they won in an 11-inning thriller. This happened a lot with the horrible May Mets, too. Um, look at May 12th. Won against the Braves to avoid a sweep. Look at the 19th. Won against um, the Marlins to avoid a sweep. May 26th. Won against the San Francisco Giants to avoid a sweep. So... The Mets have done good on Sundays before, um, you know, even June 9th in this thriller, before they just all of a sudden began to suck on Sundays, which we began to see at the end of June, heading into um, July. They actually went winless on Sundays in the um, month of August, as this was a loss, this was a loss, this was a loss, and this was a loss. Nonetheless, with that being said, um, you know, I, I, I think that the Mets can still do... I don't think they're winning a game against the Braves unless the Braves are just resting their starters. I don't think if the Braves clinch um, that they will use Chris Sale after all. Like, I don't think that they do that because at that point you want to save his arm for the playoffs. But if they don't clinch, then you know. So what, what, what are they cheering for is so weird. With all these games, you know, happening simultaneously, I mean... I mean, the Braves game is taking place at 3.20 p.m. today. The Brewers game is taking place at 3.10 today. And the Padres are playing the D-backs at um, 3.10 as well. So it's really going to be like, no, it's, it's really going to be all three games at the same time. It's going to be a ton of craziness. And hopefully these games work out in the Mets' favor.